This is the first time I've ever been on the South Broads, although I've spent several happy winters sailing on the northerly parts of this beautiful river system. Hello. Alton Broad appears as soon as you leave the lock. It was home to the first motorboat racing circuit ever to be built in the UK. In 1905, gentlemen would race their slipper launches at speeds of up to 25 miles an hour around this tranquil stretch of water. Then the blokes who race outboards took over. Generation after generation of small engine geniuses who could tweak a two-stroke till it cried out for mercy have met here almost every week or so just to see how much power they can squeeze out of a cluster of diminutive cylinders. Fortunately, it is only about once a week. And the day Jill and I passed through, there was nothing but a fleet of future Slocums, Stocks and Ainsleys learning to love sailing. The boats are toppers. We've owned several. They're almost indestructible and will fit on the roof of any car, no matter how small. This is the Broads, so it's a wonderful place for any boat fetishists who like to gawp. You never know what you're going to see lurking up a dike or hiding among the trees. The architecture of the Broads has a style and cuteness not found anywhere else in the UK. On the Broads you're not allowed to use an anchor, so you have to use a mud weight. And most people use a piece of concrete, but this guy uses a solid block of stainless steel. No idea how much that's worth. You are one ugly boat. And sometimes, around the corner comes a real stunner. A unique part of the floating aristocracy of the UK. So who's going to tell me about the boat? Yeah. Built in 1915. For what? But what was it built for? It's built for what it's being used for now. Pleasure. Is it? Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a wherry yacht. How long is it? 90, uh, 59 foot long. And how much does it weigh? 24 tonnes. 24 tonnes? Yeah, that, uh, her beam is 13 feet. Is it? That's outrageous. Is it yours? No, it's not mine. I'm the skipper of it. Who owns it? Uh, Mike, uh, Northern Broad Yacht and Company. Do they? Yeah. Well, you're a lucky, lucky bloke, aren't you? I am, very lucky. <laughs> well, I should say you'd be well pleased with your job then. That's a beautiful thing. Then there's a sharp right angle into the dike which links Alton to the three rivers of the South Broads. And look at how tall the rig is on this yacht. It's nothing exceptional around here. The slug's stubby mast is really not going to cut the mustard. But the Broads welcomes every type of water user and treats them all with respect. Half an hour further on and it's a 160 degree turn back on yourself to thrust deep into the East Anglian countryside along the River Waveney. As an agriculturalist and environmentalist I love to see these well nourished pastures, alive with birds you seldom see elsewhere in the UK. These broads rivers are so beautiful that it's easy to forget that they are by and large a construct of man. It's taken a massive investment in earth shifting to create these waterways that snake across the surrounding pastures and farmland. As you drift along you catch snatches of open water several feet below the river you're travelling on. It can be a bit disconcerting and is a welcome reminder that it takes a lot of machinery and effort and human ingenuity to keep the broads the way they are. You can see that it takes a lot of maintenance to keep these broads in good nick, so I get 30 quid not a huge amount of money for a week. 
but there can be few pleasures greater than to slip silently along these amazing backwaters. Nothing to disturb the peace but the rippling water from the slug's minuscule bow wave, the gentle burr of the warblers and the wind sighing in the reeds. The broads also manage to have tides, but hardly any tidal range, so you have a one-knot current running for six hours in one direction, and then it languorously and obligingly changes direction and starts heading back the other way. All this from a tidal range that's little more than six inches. When there's no wind, it might take six hours to do six miles, but there's nothing wrong with that. There are times when it seems the broad sailors have it pretty well sewn up. But there is a downside. They also get mobos by the spadeful. From Google Earth you can see acres of the white plastic real estate parked up rank by rank and waiting to be set loose on sunny Saturdays and every day through the summer holiday. And you never know when one or a whole fleet of them is going to come around the corner. But I have to say, I've never met a more polite and friendly bunch. All the higher mobos are governed to six knots, and the broads patrolmen are friendly yet fierce when it comes to dealing with the speeding locals. No one wants to risk having their license revoked. So if you choose your sailing times carefully, when most of the mobo drivers are in the pub or still in bed, then there are long periods when it feels as though you have the place to yourself. And you know, you really do. mornings and evenings can be utterly sublime. The thing about the broads is that you can see there's wind up in those trees, but down where I am there's nothing. about to come out into it though then, right?